coming up next on Real Life. But the next morning I woke up and something didn't feel right. Because I just knew something wasn't right. I did not see the fetus as a human being, just like the Germans did not see the Jews as human beings. He called me mom and he told me he loved me. And today is his birthday. I went to a Waffle House. As I walked in, there were six men standing in the back. They invited me back to their hotel room and in their hotel room, they gang raped me and argued over who would be my pimp. Today on Real Life, we're bringing you four stories. Each of the four stories is true and affects every aspect of our culture and life. The stories also depict a gamut of human emotions and choices involving real life decisions about pregnancy, abortion, and adoption. First, you'll meet Tara, who was consumed with anger after learning that she had become pregnant after a one night stand. I don't remember what happened that night. I don't remember what we did. I don't remember anything. Um, but the next morning I woke up and something didn't feel right. Obviously something, something horrible had happened that night. Something that was gonna change my life forever. I just, I didn't wanna believe it. Um, but the next morning I woke up and something didn't feel right. Because I just knew something wasn't right. I took a pregnancy test and I will never forget that it was, I mean immediately, it was a positive and I collapsed on my bathroom floor and was sobbing. It could not be happening to me. I felt angry. Um, I felt heartbroken. I felt confused. I was angry at the baby for even having the nerve to exist. I hated him so much. I didn't want anything to do with him. I was totally disgusted by the idea of him. The doctor walked in and she said I could do an abortion or Probably not what you would choose, but you could do adoption. Every day, there was a constant reminder that he was there and I didn't want him to be. I felt so unloved and so isolated and it's almost like I wanted him to know what that felt like. At three o'clock in the morning, I started to have contractions. And so we call the adoptive parents and we let them know it's time. I 
remember laying there. I'm strapped down to this table. I can't move except my head. And I'm turning my head side to side because I, I'm desperate to see him. I have to see him. And I keep telling my mom, Mom, where is he? I need to see him. I need to know he's okay. Where is he? I have never in my life felt a love like I did in that moment. It overpowered me. It, I had to have him. And I was hearing him cry, and I just needed to make sure he was okay. I needed to see him. I needed to touch him. The moment I heard him cry, I wasn't angry anymore. All of those hard feelings, all of that frustration and disgust melted into complete and unconditional love. I understood that God had a plan in all of this. And despite the hurt, despite the anger, he had a reason and he was going to use it for his glory. And that made all the difference. What you're going through, God has a purpose. He may not have caused it, but it can be used for his glory and he will use it. No matter the tragedy, no matter the hurt, God has a way. someone to talk with concerning your decision on abortion, please go online to www.h3helpline.org or call 866-721-7881. As you heard Tara's story, she shared her pain and confusion over her pregnancy. If you are going through that same experience, I invite you to call the helpline number on the screen. We have trained phone coaches available to help provide you resources for your healing journey. Next up on Real Life, we want you to meet a retired OBGYN who worked as an abortionist. She's going to share her professional and personal story. I'm Dr. Kathy Altman. I'm a retired OBGYN, and I used to be an abortionist. And I'd like to tell you the story of how I went from being someone who aborted babies to someone who now tries to save babies. After college, I took a year off to um, make money to go to medical school. And during that time, I met my future husband and I got pregnant and decided that abortion was the best option for me. Later I regretted that decision, but at the time I thought that was the best thing I should do. When I entered medical school, I truly believed that abortion was a woman's right, the right to choose, and I was very adamant about it. And I wanted to help women. During my training, I learned how to do DNC with suction abortions, And then I sought out extra training to be able to do the D&E abortions or dismemberment abortions. After getting my medical license, I was able to start moonlighting doing abortions at a, at a clinic in a nearby city. I got pregnant the last uh, year of my residency and during that time, I still continued to do abortions and really didn't have any qualms about it. I felt that I, my baby was wanted, their babies were not. I didn't see any problem with that. What did change my mind was when I went back to the clinic after delivering my baby, I ran into three patients that changed my life. With the first patient, I realized that I had done three of her previous abortions. And when I objected, 
and didn't want to do it. The staff told me that I didn't have that right, it was her right to choose, even if she wanted to use abortion as her birth control. She had the abortion, I talked to her there afterwards, she still did not want to use birth control and wanted to use abortion as her backup. The second patient came in with a friend, and oftentimes the patients did want to see the tissue. The friend asked her, do you want to see the tissue? And she snapped at her and said, I don't want to see it, I just want to kill it. And I wanted to say, what did this baby ever do to you? The last patient had four, four children already, and she and her husband felt that they just couldn't afford another child. So she cried throughout the whole time at the clinic, and it just broke my heart. And it was at that point, somehow, I made the baby fetus connection. And the fact that the baby was not wanted was no longer enough for me to do the abortion. And I never did another abortion. The only time I had any qualms other than that was when I did my neonatal intensive care unit rotation. And I realized that some of the babies I was trying to save were the same gestation as babies that I had aborted. The problem is that I still believed that a woman had the right to choose abortion. I still believed in abortion, and I still referred patients for abortion. As I began my practice, though, I noticed that there were women who kept their unwanted pregnancies, even very young girls, and they seemed to do fine. And then I was seeing other women who'd had abortions who were coming in with psychological problems and being extremely distressed. I was also seeing the complications of abortion. And this didn't jive with the feminist rhetoric that I had so closely embraced. And so I began, I, mean, I began to be a little uncomfortable. What finally changed me was a very loving friend gave me an article and said, would you consider reading this? I know what your position on abortion is, but would you just read this? It was an article that compared abortion to the Holocaust. Suddenly I realized that I was no different from the German doctors who did horrible experiments on people, or the Nazis who exterminated so many. I suddenly understood why they could do what they did, because I could do what I did. I did not see the fetus as a human being, just like the Germans did not see the Jews as human beings. When you don't see someone as human, you can do anything you want to them and not feel bad about it. That was the point where I became pro-life. And after that, um, it took a lot of prayer and a lot of counseling for me to get past the fact that I was basically a mass murderer and to get over the fact that I had aborted my own child as well as so many others. You know, I always love to meet people that I delivered, but it's bittersweet because I know there are so many that I will never meet because I aborted them. The thing to remember is that although we can't see who these little people are, they are people. They're still in the womb, but they're people. And, and we don't know what they're going to be or who they're going to become, but we need to give them a chance. Just as Dr. Altman shared her pain and confusion and regret of being an abortion doctor and also having her own abortion, you may be experiencing that pain and regret. 
If you are, I invite you to call the helpline number on the screen where they can help you get the resources that you need to start your journey of healing. Next up, we want you to meet a mom and her son, Aaron, and hear their real life story. Happy birthday to the birthday boy. Good morning to the birthday boy. The birthday boy won't wake up on his own birthday. I guess I'm just gonna have to open up all his presents without him. <gasps> I'm up, I'm up! <laughs> I thought that might wake you up. Okay, blow him out. <sighs> awesome! Okay, how about some chocolate chip pancakes? With whipped cream? I think I can make that happen. Then what? Then we can do whatever you want. I want to find a rocket ship. Nice. And you know where we can do that? Where? At the park. <laughs> Houston, are we ready for takeoff? Ready. In five, five four, four, three, three two, two, one. Ignition. Jupiter now. Right, we're on Jupiter. Okay. Why don't you... Oh, Jupiter. It's not have any gravity. Okay. Oh. I see a green, big, oh, alien mess. Make a run for okay. it. Oh, good job. Careful. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. No, I don't think so. I love you, Mom. I love you, Aaron? Aaron? Aaron! Aaron! I can't find him. He's gone. What happened? He was on the swing and I looked away for one second and when I looked back, he was gone. Who? Aaron, our son. Honey, what? we don't have a son. What? We, we decided not to have it. That's not possible. Look, we have this conversation every year. I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was today. His name is Aaron. And he loves rocket ships and he wants to be an astronaut. He has beautiful blue eyes. He called me mom and he told me he loved me. Today is his birthday. He's our son. I love you, Mom. I forgive you.
The pain involving abortion decisions and pregnancy affects people in all different ways. If you're struggling with that kind of emotional pain right now, I invite you to call the number on your screen and reach out to get the help and resources that you need. Next up, we want you to meet Ashley. She has her own real life story that involves a horrific story of drugs and rape. Up next, meet Ashley. Hi, I'm Ashley and I'm a survivor of human trafficking. I'm the daughter of two wonderful, loving parents. My father was in the Air Force, and I grew up just like a lot of kids grow up. When I was in the eighth grade, my, my family, we made a move to Alabama, and during that year, I went to a party, and first time ever getting drunk, and while I was at the party, I was raped. And that rape really just changed the course of my life. I started isolating myself from my parents and self-mutilating by, you know, binge eating and vomiting. I became bulimic almost immediately. Partying, drinking, and drugs became a regular part of my life. I was just running as fast as I could trying to escape this pain that I did not even realize was there. I was introduced to some people who were um, drug dealers, and so they befriended me, got to know me. Before I knew it, invited me over to their house. One night, the man who was kind of the ringleader was in town from Miami. The woman and the man, they raped me, and that was my introduction to working for them. Basically, they would take me on a drug runs, introduce me to people, ask how much they would give for me, and basically the goal was everyone, you had to bring your money back to the family. And so several times, I mean, I was beaten, and one of the, in particular times, I was drug out of bed and beaten, and as soon as I saw her leave the house, I ran to my car, drove as fast as I could, got really open the door for me to get out of there. Almost immediately, I was sleeping on a friend's couch, and he had a friend who worked for an, an escort agency in Destin. For a short time, I worked for a couple of agencies. One night, I went out to a club, and after the club, I went to a Waffle House. As I walked in, there were six men standing in the back. They invited me back to their hotel room, and in their hotel room, they gang raped me and argued over who would be my pimp, essentially who would be my trafficker, and took me to Atlanta to pimp me. It was like I was a revolving door. I really don't know even how to describe the number of times that I was raped by people that they knew. As I started having crazy panic attacks, major nightmares, a situation happened where I stole something from the person that I lived with and she proceeded to beat me almost to death. And I had a split second to run out of the house. And the neighbors called the police and the police came. And so when they came in, really the officer looked at me and really without asking me any questions, the first thing he said to me was, she's nothing but a crack whore. So really at that time, that'd been something I'd come to believe about myself. I really had no need to argue with him. And then one in particular night, I was in an argument with somebody who I'd been involved with and I, I looked at him and I just said, I need Jesus. And I really meant it like with all of my heart. And my life did not immediately change, but when I woke up the next day, doors all around me were closing. And then one night, I knew I was feeling off. I knew I was like feeling sick. That night I found out I was pregnant. I called my mom and my mom's response to me was, it's like, I've been waiting to hear that you're dead, that you're in prison, or that you're pregnant. I'm really glad you're pregnant. Do you want to come home? And really that invitation to come home, um, it really started um, like an incredible re rescue and redeeming process for me. It was really hard. The first couple of months being pregnant, I'd had nightmares every night, terrible nightmares. And this in particular night, I didn't have a nightmare. And I just woke up and I just knew I could, I always felt this evil presence lurking with me. But this in particular night, I didn't feel it. And as I woke up, I just looked up and I just said, okay, I'm done. Like, I'm done running. And I need you, Jesus, come into my heart. 
and he came and he met me in that place and um <laughs> and my life immediately changed i went through immense healing um no more like no more anxiety no more depression to help other women know that there's always hope that there's no situation that is hopeless and really that's like my life mission now because we know that full freedom complete restoration and redemption is possible with jesus my name is Ashley and this is my redemption story. I know that your heart had to be touched as you heard Ashley share her story, a story of drugs, a story of rape, a story of being trafficked and literally being used every single day. And yet, even after going through all of that journey, you hear the story of the power of Christ to not only forgive, but to restore and to give hope. And one of the things that all of us at Real Life want you to know is that regardless of the journey that you've traveled, regardless of where you are right now, whether you're considering abor an abortion or you've had several abortions, there is always hope when we will dare to trust Christ. So I encourage you, out of all of the choices and decisions that you could make in your life, trusting Christ is the one that's most important and the only decision in your life that can bring you the change that you need. We've got the helpline number up on the screen. And when you call that number, you'll talk to a trained professional phone coach who also has her own personal experience with abortion. We want to get you all of the help and all of the resources that you need to bring hope into your life. God has a good plan for your life. And as you reach out and trust Him, He will bring that plan into motion. Thank you for watching Real Life. If you need someone to talk with concerning your decision on abortion, please go online to www.h3helpline.org. Again, that's h3helpline.org. Or call 866-721-7881. Someone will be there to help and guide you. We want you to live the life God has intended so please reach out and contact us today.